Hey there YouTube, I'm Yukitsu. This is the Yukitsu Times. Welcome to my channel. This is another episode of Getting in Shape with Yukitsu. Today I'm playing Shogun 2 Total War. I've got the exact same army as last time. I haven't played any games since the last one. This army has been slightly modified. Here I've got Bo Ashigaru, Bo Samurai, Yari Ashigaru, two units of it. Those veteran white swords, the samurai from last time. Another katana samurai, those ones unveterans. And a lone sword Ashigaru unit, this one is basically peasants with swords. My general, who now has a bow. And two units of light cavalry. Now this is a slightly smaller army, but it's also slightly more competent, especially in terms of its range capability. Just because bow samurai are way better than bow Ashigaru if I get into a protracted uh, bow fight. Now this is my opponent's army. He's got these Portuguese Turcos, which are a new DLC unit. They're basically European mercenaries. Uh, he's got Bulletproof Samurai, another DLC unit. They're basically extra heavily armored spearmen, uh, Yari Samurai. They take reduced damage from bullets, from guns, and uh, basically have, I think, the highest armor value in the game. Uh, supporting them are two units of Naginata Samurai. They also have very heavy armor. They've got Naginatas, which are decent against sword units and decent against cavalry. They're sort of in between a sword and a spear in this game. And another one of here, his general, who is a Mali style general. Now, a Mali general is basically the equivalent of a katana cavalry unit, except about half size. So they're very good in Mali at his level. Uh, he's level three. And lastly, he has this Yari Cavalry, which is a powerful anti-cavalry, very fast unit. It's a very powerful charge unit, but they're not very good in a protracted melee fight. So he'll want to get that good charge in. I hope uh, that'll do a lot of damage. Now, this map is Alpine Ridge. It's got two buildings on either side. This one is the Morale Shrine, and the one over there which I'm going to capture is the Sword Dojo, which increases my melee attack value. Now. Since he has guns and I have bows, what I want to do is instead of standing on top of this hill where he'll have easy shots at my troops from down below, is to use this hill as a sort of screen for my units. And you're going to see him walking up under bow fire for a couple shots and not being able to fire just because this hill gets in the way of his guns. Now, what I can do is just keep kiting backwards since bows have greater range than these um, handguns, but that makes for fairly uninteresting replay, so I decided not to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up my bows into a good position behind this hill, so that I take reduced damage, and I'm going to move up this unit of Yari Ashigaru, put them in loose formation, and let them absorb the shots since they're expendable. Now, once I've captured this shrine, I'll have the other unit uh, come over to help cover against his Yari cavalry, but in essence, I should be able to overwhelm his cavalry just with my two units of light cavalry, or if I'm lucky with this initial unit of uh, Yari Ashigaru. Now here I've got my bows in position. They're in loose formation, so they'll be able to uh, take less damage if they get shot at. It's always a good idea to keep your bows in loose formation, uh, especially if your opponent has some sort of missiles. If they don't have any and they have, got, have a lot of light cavalry, sometimes it's beneficial to keep them in tight formation, but other than that... Now, Basically in this game, different bows have different sort of statistics, and these Yari Ashigaru use a different bow from Bow Samurai. So how much damage they do to a heavily armored unit like these Portuguese Turcos is going to vary a little bit by that armor, or by that armor shredding value on those bows. Now, one of the benefits of using Samurai instead of the Ashigaru is that they also have flaming arrows, which are inexplicably good against heavy armor. Don't ask me why they decided that's how it worked. Work. That's just how it would work. Um, as you can see, I just whiff a whole ton of them. These are very unupgraded uh, bow samurai, so they don't have great accuracy or reload. But they're doing fairly good damage against the much more expensive unit. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, as you can see, he's lined up here, but he can't get a good shot off because of this hill. So his unit's just standing there. Now that they're standing still, they're going to be a little bit easier to hit with the rest of those flaming arrows. And I think those are the last of my flaming arrows before I have to wait for it to go off cooldown. So, 
in essence, what my opponent here is going to need to do is make sure that these guys can get off as many shots as is possible. And to do that, he's going to sort of want to keep his units closer in back behind them. What he's going to do is discharge his shots after he's fired a couple volleys into my Yari Ashigaru. What I want to do is take them out with my light cavalry since once they've fired, they take quite a while to reload. And here you can see them firing. Absolute devastation. It's 27 dead Yari Ashigaru. But at the same time, he's lost about eight of these guys, and they, the eight of them probably cost way more than the 27 Yari Ashigaru, just because they're such a fodder unit. So I could actually just sit here and wait till I've sort of whittled him down through archery, but what I'm actually going to do is get my charge ready here. One of the interesting things about arrow fire is that it's not actually unit specific. So as you can see, a couple of these bulletproof samurai have been taking arrows and have been killed. And that's because the arrow projectiles arced past these um, Portuguese tercos and went into the bulletproof samurai killing them. So as good as their armor is, it's not impenetrable. So always something to keep in mind. Now another part of my strategy is that I don't want to just sort of rush up this hill into all these units necessarily while taking gunfire. If I can take out his guns and tie them up in melee with something cheap and expendable or take them up with my bow fire, I'd rather do that. And the reason for that is these are all very tough units, but I've got much stronger melee units if I get a good charge in, which I'm not going to be able to do with these guys in the way and with this hill here. So what I'm doing is taking the, uh, my unit sort of around the flanks or straight up this hill so that I'll have equal ground as him if I charge him. Here you can see I've finally gotten my charge off with my light cavalry into these Portuguese Tercos. And that'll cause quite a bit of damage. Now I didn't time it perfectly, so I did take some shots on my uh, light cavalry. But as you can see, they've broken through, they've tied them up, and they've caused a decent amount of damage for such a heavily armored unit. And his Yari cavalry had to react, so they've charged my light cavalry. I've charged his Yari Cavalry in the back with my Light Cavalry, which is going to cause really good damage against them. And I've run up my screening units of Yari Ashigaru, even though there's only half of them left. They're going to do an excellent job of finishing off a bunch of those uh, Yari Samurai, or Yari uh, Cavalry. So as you can see, a lot of panic, a lot of chaos in the middle here. Uh, if I can knock these uh, Turcos out, or at least stop them from firing while my more expensive Katan units sort of advance, that will be perfectly fine by me. So now I'm in a relatively decent position for a charge. Uh, my right flank is going to have to do an uphill charge, which is not ideal. But the thing is, these are my elite unit up against an unveteran, uh, slightly unveteran Naginata Samurai. So I should be able to win that just based off of that value. Now. I switched my target from those Turcos over to the enemy's general just because I don't want to fire at anything in this gigantic melee ball preferably. And his general makes a fairly good target as well because his general is much better than mine and much better than my units in melee so it's best if I try and knock him out of that. Now here I get a good charge with my lone swords because I move them up to the top of the hill so he's standing in a defensive position but I get a downhill charge. It's got the slight dip upwards, but I think it was still considered a good charge. In the center here, these guys aren't going to get a very good charge just because there's so much chaos in the way, but they aren't going to get a bad charge either since they charged from equal ground. And these are the only guys that are going to get an actual bad one, but they also get a fairly clear one against charging Naginatas, which is not good for them. As you can see, a lot of damage on both sides, and that's just because the uh, charge was uh, so bad for me and so good for him. But once that's resolved, once we're in melee, uh, I'm doing much more damage much more quickly. So as you can see, they're chopping straight through these Naginata, Samur uh, Naginata Samurai. So it's always a good idea to match your best Katana Samurai against things like Naginatas if you can. On the other flank, my Lone Swords are actually panicking. They're not actually going to rout, though. Uh, they're just worried that they're losing and that they've sustained a lot of casualties. My Yarji Ashigaru coming around is going to help secure that a lot. But on the other hand, now they're in melee against these guys, they're going to start winning again. And that is going to quickly demoralize them once these Yari Ashigaru get around the flanks here. 
So now that they've cleared the sides of these guys, they're going to turn back around and come in from behind, and that's going to give these guys a huge morale penalty. And since at the same time, they're going to lose the Portuguese Turcos, those guys routed. These guys are going to route since they had a unit behind them and they had allies routing. That's going to open up this flank, which is going to cause these guys to route. And these guys outright lost. So everybody's just basically chain routed and that will be essentially the entire game. As you can see, I've used that Inspire ability on my White Swords here. That's the general's ability that you get for a leadership general. Taking it adds a lot of morale, a lot of melee statistics, and a lot of uh, accuracy with bow units. So it's always worth taking, especially at sort of earlier levels. So what my opponent sort of needed to do here was take a look at his army composition because he had no sort of inexpensive units to absorb bow fire, to absorb charges. He didn't have anything that could really adequately stop a very heavy Katana army. Or basically he didn't have a very balanced army, it was a very defensive one. Uh, which can work so long as you can keep those guns from getting killed by anything. Um, and that's fairly difficult. What he needed to do in that case I think was take... Remove the Bulletproof Samurai and replace them with something more normal. I think uh, three lone, a couple of Lone Sword Ashigaru would have been a very perfect replacement for them. Uh, they're a very expensive unit, but they're very niche. They're very good at defending against cavalry attacks, and at the same time they're decent against sword units, but they're not good enough to justify taking them against a sword-heavy army like mine was. Um, what I could have done differently is I could have used a lot more kiting, but again, that would have made for a bad replay. Here, you can see I deployed about twice as many units as him, and I lost a similar number as him. And again, that's just because he took a very sort of unbalanced army. Looking at the unit statistics here, my opponents got a lot of kills with those Portuguese Turcos, but they're almost all Yari Ashigaru. That's why they got very little experience. His Bulletproof Samurai? About even on deaths and kills, and everything else did worse. And that's mostly because most of his units aren't all that great if I can sort of overwhelm them, get around their flanks, and uh, attack them from all sides, because then they can't use those excellent defensive statistics. So, for example, if a Naginata Samurai, uh, if that Naginata Samurai on the flank hadn't gotten flanked by my Yari Ashigaru, it would have held out a lot longer. And if it held out a lot longer, those defensive stats can come out to play. But when they take the morale shock of being attacked from behind, they don't get to use those defensive statistics, since, again, that's morale without actual combat. Uh, looking at my composition, you can see that I got quite a lot of kills off of my Lone Sword Ashigaru. My veteran katanas got a lot of kills. My unveteran katanas did okay. Uh, they had that sort of messy melee in the middle where everything was sort of gummed up. This Yari Ashigaru got completely destroyed without doing much, but that's basically because they were a meat shield screen, so that's fine. The other one was simply coming around the flank, so they didn't really get involved in combat all that much. And my bow units, uh, I didn't really give my bow units enough time to fully shoot all of their ammunition, uh, so they didn't have that many kills. So, bow units in this case would have been uh, far more useful if I had just sort of waited out my opponent's guns, and that's a very valid strategy given that circumstance. If I had forced them to come down to me onto the low ground, it would have made for a much clearer set of charges. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way they were used all in all. Now my light cavalry both got completely destroyed. That's pretty much to be expected given that they were just there to sort of snipe one unit and then basically get killed. Um, what I could do differently with them, and what you can do with light cavalry is just uh, cycle charge them where you charge in, retreat, charge back in, retreat, and so on and so forth. The reason I wasn't really doing this was that uh, he had the Yari cavalry. They're just as fast as my light cavalry, so uh, doing that just gets them run down. Uh, anyway, I think that's just about everything. Um, as you can see, my Lone Sword Ashigaru got enough experience. I believe they got promoted. Uh, I called them the White Hats. I'll probably rename all my veterans later when I think of something better, but that's what they are for now. My General got a bit of experience, but did not gain any levels, so he's exactly the same as he was before. 
So my next army will be much the same as this one. I did unlock Yari Cavalry, so I might take them as a replacement for my Light Cavalry. But I like the fact that it's split into two here. I've got two units of Light Cavalry, whereas I would have one unit of Yari Cavalry. So it's a bit of a trade-off there. It's just a decision. Anyway, I think that's everything for now. I hope it's been informative, and I hope to see you guys next time.